is up guys, welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and in today's video I'm going to be building the Ultima RTX 3080 streaming setup including our PC first and then all of our monitors, peripherals and streaming gear a bit later and we're going to set it all up and see just how good this system is with a cheeky live stream or two. A big thanks to today's video sponsors Scan and Nvidia, if you want to buy any of the bits uh, I mentioned today I'll link them at Scan in the description down below. Without any further ado though, let's jump into it. Now in terms of the PC components today, I've of course got a Gigabyte RTX 3080. This card has been really, really great for me in terms of performance and I've used it in a build video already, which you can check out in the card section here. I'm pairing it with a Z490 Vision G motherboard uh, and a Core i5 10600K. Now, AMD have, of course, got some exciting Ryzen 5000 chips coming, so we're going to keep our eyes peeled there. But this is going to be a great option. And because our GPU is going to be doing most of the stream processing, which we'll look at later, we don't need to go too overboard here. I'm also going to be pairing it uh, with 16 gigabytes of Spectrix D60G memory. It's a nice DDR4 kit that's going to look great today and you could pick up 32 gigs if you needed to but I think for today's build we're actually going to be okay. I've also got a Seagate Fire CUDA 510. It's an M.2 NVMe drive that boasts speeds of about three and a half gigabytes per second. Now whilst it is a Gen 3 and not a Gen 4 drive it's one of the fastest Gen 3 drives around. So it's going to work great today. I've also got uh, a power supply and a CPU cooler from Cooler Master. 650 watts, if it's a really good 80 plus gold unit, is going to be okay. And this Master Liquid ML240P Mirage is reasonably priced, but is also going to keep our CPU, I was going to say as cool as ice, but, <laughs> but cool enough under the 70 degree mark, which is exactly what we're looking for. Okie dokie, the PC is now all put together and looking pretty good. So, I need to grab not one, but two monitors today. I've gone for two of Gigabyte's G32QC. They are 32 inch monitors with a really nice curve on them and a super fast 165 hertz refresh rate with a rapid one millisecond response time. I've also picked up a dual monitor desk mount so that we can get both of them on and looking super duper neat. Okay, so after much fiddling, these look insane. We've basically got like 64 inches of dual curved monitor real estate and it looks unreal. Let's next add some of our peripherals in and then some streaming gear as well. The first of those is our microphone, but in order to install this, we need a mic boom arm. This is the Rode PSA-1 and it, it doesn't get much better than this. This is a really important accessory as a streamer. Not only does it take your mic off your desk, reducing vibrations and stuff, but it means when you're not using it, you can flick it nicely out of your way. Now onto the boom arm, I've got this. This is the Elgato Wave 1 microphone. It's got a load of really cool features built in, including a noise gate, which helps to reduce sort of underlying background noise, as well as a handy kind of mute button. And importantly, it's a USB microphone, which means you haven't got to buy an expensive XLR preamp in order to actually convert the analog audio waves into a digital signal that your computer can understand. With the microphone installed, our stream can hear us, but they can't yet see us. Now, in terms of webcams and video feeds, you really have got a few different options. You can either go for a standalone webcam like this one, or you can run a HDMI camera feed into something like the Algato uh, Camlink. Now, for this video and for this setup, I've chosen to go for the Logitech C922 Pro. This is a 1080p webcam. It's not, you know, particularly fancy. It doesn't do kind of 60 frames per second, but what it does do is give us a really solid webcam picture that's gonna look pretty good. And I'm also gonna be coupling this with an Algato key light a little bit later to make sure the image is nice and bright and really well lit. Okie dokie, before we go and get the rest of our peripherals in place, uh, it makes sense to pop our extended mouse pad in. There's loads of options on the market here, but this XPG one called the Battleground XL Prime is a pretty good value choice with RGB built in as well, which really helps here on the GeekerWatt channel. I'm gonna be pairing it with the MSI GK50 Elite 
mechanical keyboard. Now, James, a mechanical keyboard for a streaming setup? Well, yes, we're gonna be trying out NVIDIA's RTX voice technology later which should eliminate pretty much all the horrible clicky keyboard sounds. Meaning you still get a great keyboard and your audience don't get really, really annoyed. The mouse pad today though, isn't the only product from XPG. I've got their new Primer Gaming Mouse. It's a really nice mouse. It's got some decent specs and it's also pretty affordably priced, I reckon. With Omron switches, a 12,000 DPI sensor and a really cool red bottom design with plenty of RGB. Once again, it's gonna work great today. Braided cable as well, never hurts. We're now onto the final peripheral part today, pretty much. I had planned to use a different headset for today's video, but I tried out the new Corsair HS60 Haptic in my last setup video, which you can find in the card section here and was really, really impressed. So it deserves a space on the desk once again, but we need somewhere to hang it, which is where this cheap RGB headphone hanger comes in. I'll also link some more expensive Corsair options, all of course at scan in the description below. I've just realized I've actually forgot the most important two bits of today's setup. The first, is this. Now this is an Elgato key light. This is gonna light us up really nicely, make sure our webcam image is super bright and super clear. Uh, Elgato also do some really cool multi-mounts so we can position this light exactly where we need it. And I've also got this, a Stream Deck Mini. This is once again from Elgato. They genuinely make some of the best streaming gear on the market. And they've basically taken expensive production gear and packaged it up in a really user-friendly format. And that's why sometimes it's not always the cheapest. And what I'm kind of getting at is that most of the time it's actually worth the slight price bump. Uh, here we can control our key light and loads of other features. You can get this in multiple sizes as well, but I think to save a little bit of cash today, the Mini is gonna be a great choice. That's gonna simply pop just behind our keyboard there. Okay then, with a bit of tidying up left to do, I think the setup build is pretty much done. All that's left to do then is to boot this setup up and see exactly how it performs while streaming in some of your most popular titles with NVIDIA's new broadcast technologies, enabled of course. But first though, let's see how good it looks when it's all powered up. Roll the montage. <laughs> With the setup itself looking really awesome, I've booted it up to have a play about with NVIDIA's new broadcast application. We're gonna have a look at some of the camera features first. So we're using the C922 Pro webcam at 30 frames per second, and you can see there's different effects. Now there's a pretty generic background blur, you kind of see this on Zoom calls, but you can see if I kind of wave my arms around and move them back and forward, they really do stay in focus quite well. You can increase the strength like this to kind of get rid of the messy office behind me. What you can also do is background removal and we're going to use this in a second uh, when we try and do a bit of streaming on this PC. You can see I haven't even got a green screen and it's doing a really good job of removing the background behind me especially if I'm in like a corner with a stream. You can also use this really cool function called whoa called auto frame. You can adjust the zoom so we can zoom just a little bit and what it will do is it, the webcam will then follow you so it crops in and will follow your movements. So you can see here if I move my head it really nicely follows me. And that means that if your webcam's not quite framed up properly uh, and you tend to move about quite a lot, you can zoom it in just a little bit and then actually be followed, which is so sick. So I'm now in Streamlabs OBS. I've added a video capture device with my transparent webcam in. And I'm also gonna add a desktop capture, which we can do with a display capture like so. We're gonna capture this same screen because we're gonna play a bit of Fortnite in a moment. And you can see if we bring the webcam up top, we've now got this really cool transparent face cam. So let's actually start kind of streaming, load up a bit of Fortnite and see just how good the stream is really gonna look. So we've jumped into a game of solo Fortnite Battle Royale. You can see we're still running at around about 200 FPS in Fortnite, all while streaming using Streamlabs OBS with my very snazzy face cam in the corner. Visually, the game looks great, uh, especially considering the graphics card is dealing with all the streaming as well. 
So we're streaming uh, in 1440p, 60 frames per second. As I say, about 200 frames per second, which is kind of crazy. Let me know as well in the comments below, guys, what you think of this microphone. I think it's doing a really good job of kind of getting rid of any background noise and also making a sound super cool. Whoa, where the... Whoa, 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 whoa. I see him. I see him. Come here. Oh, come on. Yes! <laughs> what a kill! Beautiful. I'm not finished yet. I hear people. Can he see me? <laughs> That's three in a row! <laughs> that was just easy. He was just waiting to be killed there. The zone's closing, the zone's closing. We've got to hurry up, boys and girls. We've got to hurry up. Oh, I'm getting shot. I don't know where that's from. Whoa! Whoa! Did you see that, man? Now, another cool feature I haven't demonstrated yet is NVIDIA's AI kind of background audio removal, which is great for streamers or content creators in a slightly noisy environment. Let's start off super simple. I've got some aeroplane white noise and this is kind of like a constant sound so this is with no noise removal enabled and i'm now going to head over here and turn noise removal on now the difference is absolutely unbelievable but james i know what you're saying this is just kind of white noise this is generic this you know it's a constant sound that actually a computer can probably fairly easily get rid of so let's leave the white noise on but i'm going to get the cameraman to start clapping, like physically clapping quite loudly and at irregular intervals. And let's see how that sounds. So Jake is currently clapping behind the camera and the noise removal is on. Let's now turn it off. And here you should be able to see the, or hear, sorry, the clapping and the white noise. Let's turn it back on again. And the difference is unbelievable. NVIDIA have brought out an insane suite of broadcast tools for both microphone and audio, as well as visuals. And it really is very impressive to see. And on that note, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big old like, Ray, and make sure to get subscribed to see more from me. But as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.